Here's Noel Devine at his 15. And first contact made downfield brings Devine down. Marty Marquette on the special teams tackle. A lot of credit goes to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on that drive, starting off backed up deep in their own end, and they've been at a distinct disadvantage in terms of starting field position throughout this ball game. But consistent, a couple big plays along the way, aided by a penalty. Justin Goltz finishes it off. Nine plays, 105 yards in four minutes, 41 seconds. And that's four minutes, 41 seconds, and Anthony Calvillo's not on the field. Bomber offense we saw in the third quarter last week, and it has dominated this first half statistically. Calvillo trying to get something going. S.J. Green was his most reliable target last week as Green caught five for 119 at a big touchdown. That's just the second completion in this first half. This is going to be a quick hitter over the middle. You've got a flat route on the outside to open things up for Green on that shorter out. It seems like there aren't a whole lot of wide open throws happening for Anthony Calvillo against this Winnipeg Blue Bomber defense. Every receiver has a defender draped right on him. Eight yards for Green, second and two. Brandon Whitaker. He is met behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. So a big play by DeMond Washington is off to a tremendous start this season. Uh, this is one of the things he has to do well if he's going to fill the shoes of Jonathan Hefney at that weak side halfback position. you got to be strong against the run. Hefney, the Bombers' leading tackler last year. You're going to see Washington come from the right side of your screen and steps up. I mean, this is second and short. And he steps up and makes a play. That's four two and outs in this opening half for the Alouettes offense. Short kick by White. And it will bounce out of bounds at the 44 yard line. So Buck Pearson Company have good field position after a 31 yard punt. CFL and TS in action continues right after this game with the Argos kicking off against the Lions of BC Place. Live coverage underway after this game here on TSN and a former BC Lion is rolling right now. Buck Pierce, 9 for 11, 126 yards in this first half. Most of it on that last scoring drive. Over the middle, wanted Chris Matthews incomplete. A couple of receivers in the neighborhood, both Terrence Edwards and Chris Matthews. Uh, Chris Matthews, the league's rookie of the year, last season coming off an ankle injury in week one, slowed by that a little bit. But Buck, nonetheless, you mentioned that Chris had great drive, quickly making people forget about the three early bomber turnovers. Second and 10. Alouette showing blitz, here they come. The hitter got away, and a catch is made, and a first down grab as Buck Pierce was knocked down, but Rory Kohler has his first catch of the year. And Buck Pierce again hangs in there. He knows that this route is gonna come open over the middle. Buck's keeping his eye right there. He knows the spot that Rory Kohler's gotta get to, and he's watching for it. Throws a little high, but Kohler goes up and gets it. Free agent signing out of the University of Saskatchewan. Former Husky had 10 catches last season. 13-yard catch, and now a bobber sweep. Clarence Denmark can't turn it upfield as he is tripped up on the play by the middle linebacker, Shea Emery. Uh, good to see Clarence Denmark getting involved, a guy who never really seemed to get untracked last year after a great first season in the CFL in 2011. The touchdown last week had another big catch in that ball game. Bombers have moved him from the slot position to a wide receiver position. So he's on the line of scrimmage, and he actually feels more comfortable with that standing start. Had a 46-yard catch in last week's game. Six, second and four. 
hand off Simpson, a good second effort. And lunging towards the first down stick at around the 43. From the spot will determine whether or not those chains are moving. But Chad Simpson, who left with what appeared to be an early ankle injury, looks like he's doing just fine right now. Chris Matthews provides a lead block. It's one-on-one -on -one in the hole. Nice move on Jeff Tisdale there to pick up a few extra yards. So about a length of the football short of the first down. And Tim Burke will lead the offense out. Well, he said, this week we want to get Chad unleashed. And that got stalled in the opening series when Chad Simpson was shaken up. But he has bounced back, six carries, 27 yards since his return. And Simpson limited last week to just 35 yards, nine carries in that ball game. And of course, the Bombers getting behind early was a little bit of a factor in that. But you get a bit of the sense that Panic may have set in when they were under that first quarter storm. Two early Montreal touchdowns, one coming off an interception, another on a Tyron Carrier punt return. The run game got abandoned, but there's a clear commitment to it in the early going this week. Just two rushing first downs for the Bombers last week. Goltz back in, a plunge by Goltz, who should have it. Last time he handled the short yardage situation. He stayed in the game. We'll see if that's the case again. But this time Pierce comes back in and goals to the sidelines. Well, Chad Simpson became such an important piece for the Bombers last year. A team that's gone through a number of running backs over the last few years, but after missing the first couple games this season due to injury, he emerged to become one of just 4,000 yard rushers in the Canadian Football League last season. Bombers with a fresh set of downs in Montreal territory. There's Pierce, nobody held, and he takes a huge hit on the play. That is Alan Michael Cash unloading, and Buck is slow to get up. Uh, you had a sense that this play was in trouble from the get-go. They're trying to get the running back, Simpson, who's right at the right edge of your screen behind Pierce. He's trying to get out to the flat. He's going to get held up by Gerald Brown right at the line. And that takes away Buck Pierce's outlet. Pursuit from Cash from the inside. Cash, two of his six sacks last season, came against these Winnipeg Blue Bombers. One of the top first-year players in the league a year ago. Loss of four. Second and 14. Four-man rush, time for Pierce, throws, incomplete. Matthews can't hang on, and a flag holding call in the offensive backfield. Well, Shea Emery, the middle linebacker, coming on the blitz, held up on the play. Holding, Winnipeg number five. The penalty is declined, third down. So we've seen the Winnipeg running backs a couple of times. As Shea Emery right up, mugged in the line of scrimmage. He's coming on the plate. Now Chad Simpson can help himself here. If he steps up even a little bit more, takes Shea, Shea Emery a little bit closer to the hole where he's got less space to move around him. So Mike Renault is on to punt, and he'll be looking for the corner. That one will bounce down and into the end zone. And Devine will put down a knee and give the Bombers another point. The Rouge makes it 8-3. There's Brandon Whitaker, who is nine months off an ACL injury with more on his Recovery. Let's join John Lou. Thank you, Chris. And earlier this week, Brandon Whitaker said that he wants to be the AP of the CFL, as in he wants to come back as strongly as Adrian Peterson did from the similar injury and surgery thereafter. And certainly, 
Whitaker's rehab was taken straight from Peterson's playbook. Eight to nine hours per day of grueling work and rehab, which has allowed him to come back today. And Whitaker certainly got uh, a taste for how tough a road it was going to be. About a week after his surgery, he tried to cross the street, hobbling on crutches from his apartment to a convenience store, ended up not making it across in time. The light changed on him, and impatient Montreal drivers ended up honking for a guy on crutches. It doesn't matter if you're a Canadian Football League leading rusher. The Montreal drivers wait for no one. <laughs> well, he uses AP as inspiration. Does he have 2,000 yards in his first season back after that amazing performance by Adrian Peterson this year off ACL? And flags fly. This play doesn't get off. <laughs> This is not what we've come to expect at home from Montreal. Offside, Montreal number five. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Well, Devine offside and everything out of sync right now for this Montreal offense. Dan Hawkins talked at length this week about how they just need to be better, a little better at everything, a little better at protecting, a little better in terms of the timing between receivers and quarterback, a little bit better in the run game. But so far... Very little to show for another week's worth of practice. Second and 14, Patrick LeBlanc released from the backfield. And so too is Whitaker up the sidelines where he is eased out. Terrell Parker got a hand on him, but he'll be well short of the first down. And this Montreal offense remains spinning its wheels. And Montreal at this point just one for seven on second down conversions. Nice coverage downfield by that Bombers secondary combined with the pressure from the boys up front. Anthony Calvillo left with no choice but to go to the check down route underneath the Whitaker. Offensive coordinator Mike Miller searching that play sheet for a solution. Devon Washington who had the punt return touchdown last week is back. His first of this game at the 22 yard line flagged down as he is dropped at the 30 yard line. 46-yard punt by Sean White. Washington, an 80-yard punt return touchdown that uh, made the highlight reels last week. Had an 82-yarder last year against Montreal. It was his third career punt return touchdown in the CFL. No yards. Montreal number 17. 15-yard penalty. First down Winnipeg. So a 15-yard penalty against Billy Parker. Well, DeMond Washington, one of the bright spots on defense, special teams for Winnipeg, one of the bright spots offensively. Jade Etienne, the third-year man, number four overall pick in the 2011 CFL draft. Slow to develop. Some people starting to question that pick as he had just one catch for 11 yards through his first two years. Came up with one of the biggest offensive plays of the game for the Bombers last week. Finishing up with three catches, 80-plus yards on the day people frequently forget that uh, this young man just 23 years old in his third year in the league he was one of the youngest players in that 2011 draft class so patience was important it looks like here in year three it's starting to pay some dividends for joe mack and the bombers bombers were just about ready to go on offense and uh, mike edom took a knee training staff came out edom to the sidelines and mark olivier Briet comes in at Safety for the rookie. Will Ford trying the right side. And Alan Michael Cash was there. She Emery on the scene. Well, Mike Edom, the rookie going to the sidelines, but he's already had an impact on this ball game. A sack, followed by a fumble recovery in the first possession. Number three overall pick in this year's CFL draft. Had an interception against Winnipeg last week. We see the sack and the fumble recovery this week. We're wondering if the Bombers might be wishing that they hadn't passed on this guy with the number two pick. He has to sit out three plays. Second and 13. Pierce stepping up and going down. Buck Pierce taken down by Michael Klassen. Mike Klassen, another University of Calgary product drafted by the Alouettes this season. As was Mike Edom. You see the top five picks in this year's CFL draft. 
Mike, Mike Edom, Stephen Lombala, teammates at the University of Calgary, both selected by Montreal. Andy Malumba, the number two overall pick out at Eastern Michigan. Currently with the Green Bay Packers. A little worried if he shows up, Malumba and a couple of Malumbas. Play-by-play man's worst nightmare. Great kick, drives Devine back inside his 25, but he's explosive. Noel Devine on the return, and he'll get dragged down across the 40-yard line. Good contain there by Michel Pierre Pombriand. 55-yard punt, 17 on the return. And this is as quiet a half as we may have ever seen out of Anthony Calvillo as an Alouette starter. That sure is under 50% completion for a guy who had his best game of the season. In week two against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers last year, over 400 yards, completing 75% of his passes in that ball game. AC, a career 28 and 12 record against Winnipeg. Side of Whitaker hit that line with good speed. Slowed up by Enoch Mwamba. Good flow here by Enoch Mwamba. This is the battle. Mwamba versus Whitaker. Whitaker, the established star. Mwamba, number one overall pick in 2011. Emerging star in the Canadian Football League. He's established himself as a full-time starter, becoming a playmaker and a leader on this Bomber defense. Second and four, short drop, and Arlen Bruce with the catch, and a first down for the Alouettes across midfield. Ten-yard gain for Bruce, and the Alouettes offense will stay on the field as we get the three-minute warning. First half at Percival Bolson. Coming up at GMC live at the half. All our police and the coaches playbook will break down what's happening with AC. Dave Jock, Matt, and Schultz will preview the second game of our doubleheader tonight. It should be a great one at BC Play Stadium between the Argos and the Lions. Just the second first down of the game for Montreal, and now Whitaker dragged down by Damon Washington, but it's back-to-back -back first downs for the Alouettes as they try and get something going. Uh, they've managed to find a bit of a gash up the middle on very similar plays. Last two handoffs to Brandon Whitaker, bringing him from an offset. Running backside to frontside on that play. Not having a lot of success, obviously, in the passing game thus far. Turning to Brandon Whitaker to get things going. Whitaker's return coinciding with an ankle injury to Chris Jennings, who was the starter last week again to Whitaker, but this time nothing doing. Like Zach Anderson in on the stop out of Northern Michigan, a Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan native, and his folks are having